Medical Mission Camp. I never mentioned that. Never mentioned that. I said it is the answer of blah blah blah. We're, we're studying Ephesus. On Sabina, what is the topic of the preparation? Right. Right. The, the main topic of the preparation camp is the answer of the church of Ephesus. The answer. That's why we are covering six chapters of Ephesians. Are you are you angry at me? Stay like, when did you say that? I never remember. You said I did. Yes. Because I have the evidence here. Right here. Don's camera is my evidence. Yes. So the answer of the church of Ephesus is the main topic of the preparation camp. And with this word, we are preparing ourselves as a spiritual missionary. Right? And as a spiritual missionary, we will actually go there and shine the light of Christ. <laughs> you don't have to worry about this medical because they have already experts, nurses, and doctors. So many doctors there, you don't have to worry about this. Okay. Use them as the doors of evangelism and missions. Okay? All you have to do is prepare yourself and shine the light. <laughs> That's it. And let's move on to Ephesians chapter 2. Well, Vision chapter 2. Okay. Vision chapter 2. Uh, can you please read verse 1 to 3? As for, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work, and those who are, work, and those who are disobedient. All of us also live among them at one time, gratifying cravings in our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. When you think about this verse 1 to 3, this is the spiritual state of non believers Spiritual state of non believers Spiritual, spiritual state. If you look at verse 1, it says, You were dead in your transgressions and sins, which means because of the original sin of Genesis chapter 3, as well as the actual sins that you commit, you are spiritually dead. That's why it is called everyone in, is in the state of sin. And if you look at verse 2, you used to follow the ways of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. Who is the ruler of the kingdom of the air? Satan. 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 That's why everyone is being dragged and controlled by Satan. 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 And in verse 3, it says, We were by nature objects of wrath. You will never know when this God's wrath will come upon you because we are living under the background of hell. That's why everyone is living a hellish life. But not only that, after death, they are bound to go to hell because they belong to Satan. And these three is called what? The three? Curses. 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 Three curses. Right? So Ephesians chapter 2 Satan. starts with Paul explaining about the spiritual state of non-believers. We were dead in our transgressions and sins. So when you go to the field of Mindoro, you must be able to diagnose them with the same spiritual state. Even though they might have money, even though they might have motorcycles, they are under sin, sin. Satan, and hell. Yeah. And that is the reason why God sending you guys to the field. Wow. Right? To see this spiritual state and to make them come out from three curses mm. by believing in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay? And verse 4, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgression. It is by grace you have been saved. Right. But because his great love for us, and that great love is expressed in Romans chapter 5, verse 8 as well. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. 
while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Because of this incident of Jesus Christ, we were saved by His grace. It is by grace you have been saved. And number verse 6, please. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. God raised you up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms, which means you belong to heaven. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, but your citizenship is in, in, heaven. in heaven. heaven. Our physical citizenships might be different. My citizenship is South Korea, not North Korea. <laughs> your citizenship is the Philippines. But our spiritual citizenship is the same, right? It's heaven, right? God seated you with Christ in, up in heaven, which means your background is the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Always, always enjoy this. My background yeah. is not my, my friend, background. not my parents, but the kingdom of God. Amen. With this background, you are going to the field of Mindoro. And number seven. In order that in, in, order order that that in the coming ages, the might show, show the incomparable riches of the grace expressed in this kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Right. God wants to use you as witnesses who proclaim that Jesus is the Christ to all the generations that will come in the future, right? And because of you proclaiming the gospel in the field of Mindoro, all the posterities, all the future generations of Mindoro will see that Jesus is the Christ. We have to leave behind the eternal masterpieces through this camp. Lord, through this missions camp, May I become the witnesses who will proclaim that Jesus is the Christ. And all posterities and future generations of the Mindoro will see that God is alive. Amen. 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 And number verse 8 and 9, please. For it For is by grace, grace you have, have been saved, saved through faith. the faith, and it is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, God. not by words, so that, that we have obtained both. Right. So when it comes to talk about salvation, there's nothing that you boast about, because it is the gift of God. Amen. The Amen. reason you are saved is because you have been given it gift. as a gift. Not because of work, not because of hard working, not because of your knowledge, education, but by God's grace. But the only method by which you are saved is through your faith. Because nothing that you and I possess is worthy enough to receive salvation. That's why God requested only one thing. All you have to do is believe in the Messiah. Believe in the Christ. Even your ancestor Abraham believed in me and were saved. That's it. And number 10. For we are, For we are God's, God's one created in Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. See, to do. For we are God's workmanship. What does that mean? You are God's yes. masterpiece. Yes. Right. You are God's masterpiece created in Christ to do what? Good to works. To do good works. What is the good work in the eyes of God? Is it giving money? Is it giving Giving no. a cup of cold water to me? No. Saving it is saving souls, souls saving with the gospel. Soul. That is the greatest work. That is a good work in the eyes of God. That's why God has chosen you as His workmanship, as His masterpiece created in Christ to do this good work in the eyes of God. That is saving souls with the gospel. Right? Which God prepared in advance for us to do. Right? God has already prepared everything. You don't have to prepare anything. All you have to prepare is absolute faith. Amen. Amen. And number 11, please. Therefore, Therefore remember, remember the form you are our by word are called by those who call themselves the circumcision done in the body of the What he's saying is that in the Old Testament, if you are Gentiles, if you're not circumcised, you're not saved. And that's what Paul is saying. You were once in that state. You were spiritually dead. You were spiritually Gentiles. You were spiritually uncircumcised. You have nothing to do with God's salvation. And number two, verse 12. 
Remember, Remember that at that time you were separated from Christ, excluded from the decisions in your hands, and for in years to the covenant of the promise, of the promise without, without hope and without God in the world. See, you are separated from Christ, right? No, eternal destruction. Eternal. If you are separated from God, if you are separated from Christ, eternal no. destruction befalls men without any exception, right? However, and you are excluded from citizenship. You are excluded from this citizenship of heaven when you were separated from God. Mm -hmm. And without any hope, without yeah. God in the world. If you are without God, you are without hope. Mm -hmm. If you are without God, you are within complete despair, mm -hmm. right? And that is the spiritual state of all people who are away from God. You must be able to see this. When you see the people of Mindoro without God, you must see that they are without any hope. They think that their only hope is the great nations helping them with money and sciences, but that is not the ultimate answer. Mm -hmm. The ultimate answer that they need is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. You need to really see that. They do need money, they do need water, they do need a lot of good infrastructure. However, that is not the fundamental solution. Fundamental solution is that they need to be with God once again. As the one who possesses the image of God through Jesus Christ. And number okay. verse 13. But and now in Christ Jesus, Jesus you were once were far away, and have been broken in the spirit to the blood of Christ. But please highlight in Christ Jesus. Highlight. In Christ. In Christ. And this is one of the phrases that Paul uses a lot. In Christ Jesus, you blah, blah, blah. In Christ Jesus, you blah, blah, blah. He always emphasized that you are within Christ Jesus. No matter how weak you are, no matter how many limitations you have, but you are in Christ Jesus. Right? So he says in verse 13, but now, right? But now, it's a contrast. But now, you are Gentiles. You are uncircumcised. You are without God, without hope. But now in Christ Jesus, right? That is your spiritual current address, right? Why don't we bless each other by saying, you are in Christ Jesus. You are in Christ Jesus. Right. And please read the, the rest of the verse 13. For he, himself, for he himself is our peace who has made, made the, the world of one and has destroyed the barrier and the dividing wall of hostility. And verse 15. Hostility. By abolishing the flesh of the Lord with the commandments and regulations, his purpose was to create himself one new man out of two, thus making peace. Right, it says, but now in Christ Jesus, verse 13, you who were once far away have been been brought near through the blood of Christ. Near to who? Near to God through the blood of Christ Jesus. Right? You were once far away, which means you were within absolute eternal destruction. But now in Christ Jesus, you have been brought near to God. For he and for he himself is our peace. Who is our peace? That's why Jesus Christ is our only peace. Who has made the two one, and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. So hostility. when we commit a sin against God, a wall was erected between God and us. That's why, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. No one can cross over this line. No one can cross over this wall. No one, no philosophy, no science, no success can actually cross over this wall. However, Jesus Christ, through his resurrection and crucifixion, he completely broke down this wall. That's why he said, he made two, one. And by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations, he completed all the laws through his crucifixion and resurrection. And his purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace. And verse 16, please. And in this one, and in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. Even today, Pastor John says, Jesus Christ is the only Savior, is the only mediator because Jesus Christ is 100% God and 100% man. 
That's why as the 100% God, He can resolve our sins. And as the 100% man, He represents the entire humanity. Amen. Right? So by dying on the cross and resurrecting, He completely opened the way for us to be revived. And He put to death their hostility. Right? So where you can find this? Genesis chapter 3, 15. Can you guys read this? I report in the Golden Bell. Golden Bell. Yeah, it's coming up in December. Don't worry. Yeah, can you guys read it out loud? And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers, we will crush your head and we will strike his heel. Strike his heel. The offspring of a woman will crush the head of the serpent. He completely put to death their hostility. And number 17. He came, he came and preached to you, to you for our way, and way and peace to those who were near. Yeah. Right, because Jesus Christ preached peace to us, we need to do the same thing. We need to preach the message of peace, the cross of the gospel, to the people who are spiritually lost in the field of Nimdor. Right? We are going there as a peacemaker. Right? So if you look at Ephesians chapter 6, I can recall the verse. Can you guys look up the verse... 15. Why do we have why we are the peacemakers of God? Ephesians chapter 6, 15, which we will cover in the sixth week before we go to Mindoro. Hello, Ephesians 6, 15. And with your feet, feet head with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Right. Right. God, Paul is talking about the full armor of God when he was talking about the boots right? he says this with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace right? because Jesus Christ preached this gospel of peace to us same thing for us we are the spiritual peacemaker we will go there and preach the gospel so that they can be reconciled with God by believing in Jesus Christ. Okay? Reconciled. And, and verse 18, please. For, for truly we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. See? We have access to the Father by Spirit, which means Jesus Christ is the only key to be connected with the throne, connected to the triune God. That's why we, we pray in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. That is the only way for us to have access to the, to the Father by one Spirit, the Holy Spirit. We have been sealed by His Spirit. right? That is the guarantee that you are His children. And when you believe, when you pray in the name of Jesus Christ, you can have access to our Father God. So please use this key a lot. <laughs> please. Don't keep it inside of your pocket. Use this key a lot. The key of Jesus Christ. Because that is the only way for you to have access to the triune God. And 19, please. Consequently, you are a longer foreigner and aliens, the fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. Right. This is the message that you must preach to the Mindoro people. Right? Consequently, Right? As a result of your faith in Christ Jesus, right, you are no longer foreigners. God. You are no longer aliens, right? but fellow citizens with God's people. Your name is recorded in the book of life when you believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. You must be able to tell them, the people of Mindor, you guys are not foreigners. You guys are not aliens. But now, the fellow people, the fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. You are the body of Christ. You are the holy temple of God from now on when you believe in Jesus Christ. And verse 20, 
Build the foundation of the foundation of the prophets and prophets and Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. Amen. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone of our ministry. Cornerstone. Amen. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone of this missions camp. Amen. 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 Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone of your life. Amen. 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 Right. And that must become your foundation. So, Amen. Right. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets who pro proclaim the gospel with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. If, if you take out this cornerstone, your house will be crumbled, will be destroyed. Right? If you get rid of this foundation, even if you have a lot of money and luxurious cars and achieve so many things, your life will crumble like the Tower of Baal. Right? So make Christ as a chief cornerstone of your life, of your family, of your future, and of your walk of faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. And verse 21. In him, in him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. This is the reason why we have to form oneness. It says, in him, in Christ Jesus, who is the chief cornerstone of our church, right? This building, entire building is joined together, right? It's not separated. Joined together and rises to become all holy temple single temple right we are being unified to create this one single holy temple of god right however satan will hinder you from forming this oneness that's why you need to fight the spiritual fight spiritual fight because in jesus christ we are building one holy temple of god amen amen our ministry is one holy temple of god amen amen and verse 22, last verse. And, and in him you two are being built together, together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Doesn't it very familiar sound very familiar? Yes. With, with what verse? First Corinthians 5, 16. Right. Dwelling. Don't you know that you are God's temple because the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you? And same content is revealed in verse 22 in him in christ jesus you are being built together to become a dwelling in which god lives by his spirit that's why you are the holy temple of god amen amen that is your identity don't forget who you are okay when you go to the field you must be strong you must be victorious in the name of jesus christ Amen. you need to receive all the answers that the church of Ephesus enjoyed. Okay? So, even though I will be leading the six chapters of the book of Ephesus, but you should be able to extract the answers that you want to get when you go to the field of Mindo. Right? You need to think about, well, among this content, what is the answer that I want to receive? Right? I want to become a peacemaker that will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right? You need to think about what kind of answers that I want to get? Of course, I will be leading this training by going through each verse. However, you must think about what kind of answers I want to receive when I actually go to the field of Mindo. That's why I will give you a mission. That is. Mm -hmm. Please come up with. <laughs> Three prayer topics that you want to receive through this Mindoro camp. And I will be sharing these prayer topics with Pastor Yang and medical team as well. Because they want to pray for you guys as well. As a one prayer team. Okay? So each one, each one. prayer topics that you want to enjoy, that you want to receive from... Okay. Even if you don't go there, Rosemary, you can still come up with the three prayer topics, right? As a supporting missionary. Is it hard? Not hard with God. Yeah. Please 
come with three pair topics and send it to Elder Joanne. And 하나의 word file 같은 걸로 해서 저희랑 같이 나눠서 기도할 수 있게. 그래서 언제요? 언제까지요? 바이 투나잇? 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 Wednesday night. Bali, 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 deadline. No. Oh, 15. Sweet, mommy. Red calendar. Welcome to the million. Please think about it, okay? What kind of answers? As you look through the chapter 1 and 2, and you can read in advance. Chapter 3, 4, 5, 6. You can read in advance. And as you read this entire six chapters, God will give you the wisdom and revelations. As Paul's prayer topics, right? So the three prayer topics. No, I have come up with six prayer topics for the entire YM. No, no, no. They gave me a mission to come up with like five to six prayer topics that we as unit, as a unison, to receive answers. And throughout last week, I really prayed to God what kind of answers that I want to receive and once it is ready, it's almost 90% ready. So once it's ready, I'll share that with you as well. Okay? There's a mission by this time. Rios. <laughs> Are you good at Microsoft Word? <laughs> Steffi, are you good at work? No. Organizing everything into one document. Yes, but uh, I don't know. My laptop is actually you know, out of you know, work. <laughs> <laughs> out of work. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't want to give another person to Rosalie. <laughs> but please, please use the same format. <laughs> okay. like, like, do either one, two, three, or bullet point to make it look the same. Okay, so when Ella Joanne receives it, don't look at, don't consider it as a chaos. Okay, to write it neatly. Okay, you're gonna type it though, right? Type it. Type it. Okay, is it? Hmm. Oh, why no? Are you? Oh, wow, wow. You will do? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 We have two types of missionaries. The one supporting missionaries, right? Sending missionaries. And those who are participating. Supporting missionaries. And those who are participating missionaries, right? And participating missionaries are Elder Joanne. Uh, Elder Ethan. Layan, Sai, Rosalie, Konzi, Sunni, Steffi. Oh, yeah, yeah. Next, we're going to run with the energy soon. I'm sorry. Oh, I see. That's it? Right? That's it? And for me? So with you. With you. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? Seven participating missionaries. Right? And we have how many how many cells? About six to seven. Six to seven cells. So what we are going to do is 